welcome to a psychology if you're new here hello i'm miss m i am your tutor for everything psychology so whether you're in the ace program or whether you just want to be an ace at psychology make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with the latest psychology info and theories Welcome into today's video. If you are here, it's because maybe you really want to know a little bit about BII phobia. Do you know what that is? Blood injection and injury phobia. This is the, the sight of blood, the sight of somebody getting scratched or scraped or cut. It is a phobia of blood. People are fainting at the sight of blood or they are fainting at this idea of, of injury or have a phobia of this idea of injury. And today's study is Chapman and this study was done in 2014. And we have a case study. It is done with an adult and it is done with and through the treatment of BII phobia. And we are using cognitive behavioral therapy in hopes of curing this phobia. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the context of this, this background of, more specifically, we're talking about cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. And most phobias can actually be treated with CBT. And it, at the least, it's going to reduce the fear response of our patients. However, participants with BII phobia, blood injury and injection phobia, um, that is seen as something that is a little bit more in depth. And we, we've realized now that just cognitive behavioral therapy alone has not proven to minimize the symptoms. And this is because participants tend to faint. So we have to incorporate different methods of getting our participants to stay conscious enough to get over this fear itself. Okay, so let's look at some of the main theories that are associated with this. Now, cognitive behavioral therapy has been proven um, as a very successful therapy because it, it, it causes participants to kind of challenge their irrational thoughts. And these rational thoughts are what's leading to changes in behavior. These changes in emotional responses and the changes of thoughts are all helping our participants get better and respond in a less fearful way to whatever it is that they have a phobia of. Now, we are looking at anxiety disorders, and this can be looked at within clinical psychology. The introduction of behavioral therapy of anxiety has kind of paved the way for other types of treatment. Treatments such as applied tension. And this is basically just applying pressure to certain areas of the body in hopes of creating more blood flow within the participant. BII is actually associated with having low blood pressure because participants with low blood pressure typically faint. So there is this whole connection with BII and low blood pressure and fainting. So if we can apply pressure to different areas of the body in hopes of increasing blood flow, then it's, it's possible we can kind of catch the participant from, from fainting. And if we can do that, then we can apply cognitive behavioral therapies in order to help them kind of get over their phobia a little bit better. And why is this important, might you ask? Well, a lot of people rely to have blood work done to stay healthy. And if participants are unable to get those treatments done for themselves without fainting, without having anxiety attacks, um, then it is, it is much healthier for them at the end of the day. And it's easier on the phlebotomist who is taking the blood. Okay, so let's look at the aim of the study. So the aim of the study is basically to see if participants with BII can be successfully treated with cognitive behavioral therapy and applied muscle tension. Now again, this is a case study, so this is one participant. So at the end, you know, this is not gonna be generalizable to a whole lot of people, but it is going to give us a little bit more in look or insight into this phobia. You know, most phobias, um, we don't have experiments that we can do on people with phobias. It's it's less likely people are going to have specific phobias. It's, it's gonna be more difficult to gather a 25 participants with BII phobia. Um, so we're gonna use case studies. 
and case studies are going to help us have a more in-depth look at this overall. Like most case studies, we're going to use interview techniques, um, and this is going to help us gather a lot of background information about our participant. And our participant in the study, um, we're just going to call them T, okay, because we have to make sure that we don't give any identity out, we have to maintain autonomy and confidentiality. Now this questionnaire, what are we looking at in this questionnaire besides background information? We kind of want to know like what trauma this person has been through, um, what traumatic experiences have they seen that kind of helped cause this, this phobia. We also used questionnaires like the Beck's Anxiety Inventory and the Beck's Depression Inventory. And we also use something called the BISS, Blood Inventory Symptom Scale. And this was given to simply see if T even met the criteria to have this BII phobia, which he did. Now T was also diagnosed with major depressive disorder. And this was like way back in college that he was diagnosed with. So um, we're going to start this case study um, where T is given nine sessions of CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. Now, during the CBT, we are basically educating T about how phobias come about. We are showing him how he created this fear hierarchy. Um, and this is like by showing someone how possibly over a period of time they made, I guess, a good phrase is made mountains out of molehills where um, something really small may have over time accumulated the anxiety to the point where they believe really big things or really bad things are going to happen. Even if it's just like a tiny prick of blood, this person may believe that they would just completely bleed out. So T was also shown what we call SUDS. And this is the subjective unit of discomfort scale. And this was given to rate his anxiety on a scale of 0 to 100. And this is based on different areas of the hierarchy exposure. Okay, so that was basically it for this case study. We did these questionnaires. We did these nine sessions of CBT. We tried to explain to T um, how he created this hierarchy. And within this hierarchy, let's just say, um, you know, the scale of zero to a hundred, um, we would say like, uh, a hundred being the most anxious, the worst. So what would a prick on the finger be? What would a cut be? What would, um, a car accident be? Something like that, like giving him, um, different levels to rate his anxiety. Now, before undergoing any of this treatment, it's important to know that the majority of the issues here was like severe anxiety. Um, he didn't seem to have a lot of depression. And overall, he was in pretty good health, physical health. And he just seemed to show a lot of anxiety and fear around injections that involved taking blood. So when we work with a fear of hierarchy, we are basically bringing that fear up to our participant. We are using cognitive behavioral therapies to work through each issue. Now, in the beginning, um, T rated taking blood through an injection, taking blood as a 40 out of 100. But at the end of the therapy, um, he actually rated taking blood as a zero. And this was only using minimal muscle tension and manipulation like we talked about before. At 4, 10, and 12 months, T actually came back and reported um, back to our researchers to give feedback to see if this treatment was long-lasting. And it showed that his anxiety levels had dropped significantly. And he no longer showed fear related to specifically medical stimuli, such as getting an injection or needles. In short, he no longer had a phobia and he said he never felt better. So through this pairing of CBT and muscle tension therapy, we showed severe improvement, like amazing improvement in this individual. So before the treatment, our participant 
passed out, showed severe anxiety during like phlebotom phlebotomy treatments. Um, and then after this treatment, after our CBT and muscle tension therapy, our participant, it didn't phase them at all. So it's, it worked. It, it worked amazingly. So I mean, if you are somebody who, who suffers with this, or you know somebody who suffers with something like this, um, or a phobia in general, it is, it is shown here in this study that these two therapies paired together work immensely well. Now, it is important to know that part of this study, there could have been um, some type of motivation by T to get better. Um, there is some internal motivation for people to, uh, I would say, social desirability, um, where our participant was expected to get better. And um, it's very possible that our participant faked it. It's, Im it's very possible. I mean, it's never impossible um, because the results were very drastic. So it, it is possible that our participant knew that this whole shindig was about him getting better and having zero responses to blood injections in blood. Um, and therefore gave the experimenters what they wanted, or at least told them what they wanted to hear by the end. Um, and just speaking from reading other research in the past, someone say, why would they do this? Well, if the treatment was causing more anxiety, some people are smart. They know if they give the experimenter what they want, then the therapy ends. So it's very possible that it could have caused more anxiety and that it was it was faked I just have to throw that out there it's not that it's written in this study particularly um, I just have to say this because you never know it's one individual and when it comes to things like questionnaires and things like that um, we used a lot of questionnaires in this study and self reports in this study so it's very possible that for that moment um, of reporting back to our experimenters, he just stated that it worked when it didn't. Now, I'm not saying that is the case, but it's very possible. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this study. I hope this study brought a little bit more information to you. I hope you have a better understanding now of even possibly what BII is or was or what that phobia was um, and how cognitive behavioral therapy and applied muscle tension ca can be used in combination to possibly help participants with blood injury and injection phobias. Again, why did we pair the two? Because participants are likely to pass out and there was a connection with low blood pressure. So by using the certain um, pressure points, we can increase blood flow and therefore keep participants awake and conscious um, and help them to talk themselves through, which is that cognitive behavioral therapy, thinking through um, these specific phobias, where they came from and how they became so big from probably smaller incidences. So hopefully this helps you out in your daily life. Hopefully you gained a little bit out of this. I absolutely love learning new research and psychology um, ideas and treatments because there's this can be used in so many different ways for so many other different therapies. We don't have to just use this for this specific anxiety therapy, but more specifically, um, we are talking about anxiety and we are trying to find different ways to help people get over their anxiety. And if you've ever had a panic attack, you know that sometimes you feel like it's an out of body experience where you have no control and it's very possible using certain pressure points could kind of you know, raise your blood pressure back up to the point where you have a sane mind and you can think and talk your way through any episodes that you're having. So I want to thank you for being here. Thanks for hanging around. Don't forget to like this video and I hope to see you in some other videos. Go ahead and write down in the comments if you know someone that this could help. If you have any other questions about this specific study, I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks so much, guys.